begin our services for our Eucharistic celebration. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to all hearts are open, all desires known, and from me no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Glory to you, Lord God of our ancestors. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. Glory to you beholding the depths. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you caused all Holy Scripture to be written for our learning. Grant us to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given to us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
Our lesson this morning is from the book of Hebrews. Every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalmist, First Samuel, will read it responsively. Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. My mouth divides my enemies because I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord, no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more very proudly. come from your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The vows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble are in strength. Those who were, were full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who are hungry are fat with spoil. The bear is born of seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to shoal and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings the Lord and also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap. To make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness. The Lord, his adversary, shall be shattered. The Most High will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the end of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of his anointing. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be and what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pain. <laughs> the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Many years ago, when I had opportunity to travel more than uh, what I'm able to do now, um, I would find myself going across the Atlantic a number of times, visiting various areas and kind of working out of Rome. Um, obviously, Rome was kind of a home base for what I was doing. And I always tried to find a place where I felt comfortable and able to sit and meditate and become part of a local community. And the community that I always went back to to visit at whichever time I was able to do that was Assisi, a little bit north of Rome. And I loved it because it was built on a mountainside. And in order to get there, you could drive, but you had to park down and then walk up to get to this small village of Assisi, of course, named after St. Francis of Assisi, who grew up there and ministered there and started his order there. They have, and what I always enjoyed, they had a cathedral there that was one of the most beautiful places I had ever visited. And the entire ceiling were the, made of those small mosaic squares that were all kind of put together and they were very, very old. And I thought, what a magnificent place. Every time I read this gospel, I think of Assisi because the warning here in the gospel is be careful that you don't put all your eggs in one basket because it's not going to last. And some years after, Assisi had an earthquake and the entire ceiling of that cathedral came down. And the people of the community were stunned that anything could happen with that cathedral that St. Francis himself built for his community. The reason I share that today is because the gospel talks about those places that we see and come to understand as permanent fixtures. And of course, in our gospel this morning, it is the temple. And Jesus said, don't count on this, friends, because it's only temporary. And one of the things that I draw a parallel to when we talk about those great structures being temporary and they're only going to last for a while and, and they are not that which lasts forever, I compare it to us because we are temporary as well and we will only last for a certain period of time not as long as some of those temples and not as long as some of those cathedrals that are magnificent structures. But we are temporary. And in the midst of our being temporary, we are asked through this story today to really begin to examine what our values happen to be. Because you see, when things crumble like a cathedral or the magnificent structures around the world because of earthquakes or other elements of nature, they're gone. They're ended. And we will reach that from a physical perspective someday in our life. And what Jesus says in living that temporary life that we have right now, we always need to examine our faith and our hope faith in Jesus Christ crucified and risen from the dead and the reality that from that comes hope that we will embark upon eternity and will be forever. That's the promise. But yet many times when we begin to value, look at our values, it isn't a fun exercise for us because sometimes we have to admit that we probably are more human in some areas than maybe we would really like to be. And I say, that's okay. That's okay. As long as that does not overtake the faith and hope that we're called to 
in the Easter message of Jesus Christ. Because if that happens, we're going to be a cathedral piece and we will crumble. And our eternity will be, but it will not be the resurrection. But yet Jesus calls us on a daily basis. Look at what you do. Look at what you say. Look at how you act. Because if it doesn't emanate from your heart that is grounded in Jesus Christ, we need to reevaluate. Because you see, with Jesus, it's never too late. It's never too late for us. And no matter who or what, he continues his love. Because you see, his love never ends. Our love can end. And that becomes a huge danger for us. Because then we begin going down the road of putting me first. And not others. And not our service. But what's best for me. It's needed, but not as the number one value that we have. And when we do that, we are walking in a dangerous arena. So today, as we hear this gospel, this gospel, if you listen to it, and if you take things all kinds of literal ways, it's a scary thing. It talks about wars and talks about insurrections and talks about all kinds of ways in which people don't like each other. Hmm, come to think of it, kind of familiar. <laughs> and so, Jesus says to the apostles, just beware. Be aware, be alive, be alert, and allow Jesus to guide your path. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us rise and profess our faith. We believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Loving and gracious God, walk before us and beside us into your future. Make us agents of healing, teachers of love, bearers of good news. Make us a blessing in those around us in your name, Lord of love. Hear our prayer. We ask that your church be infused with a renewed sense of your mission, with a greater devotion to you and affection for each other. Send us into the world where we are most needed, armed with courage, wisdom, and strength. Keep us from distraction and spare us, O oh Lord, from numbing inertia, Lord of love. 
Hear our prayer. We pray for those in leadership, the president, teachers, city council members, coaches, parents, and all who take responsibility to lead, that integrity and mercy fill their life and work. Lord of love. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for people who work for the health of us all. Bless those who give comfort to the sick and dying. We lift before you our friends who are ill and hopeful for your healing. Betty Barton, Roger Basque, Chris Bauer, Steve Becker, Michael Bowe, Mildred Cox, Bill Dixon, Catherine Ekstrom, Norma Jets, Gloria Monroe Johnson, Natalie Mosey, Maggie Leto, Marion Dwyer Miller, Isla Olafson, David Rash, Julie Schulte, John Stonehouse, James and Mary Ellen Troyer. Lord of love. Hear our prayer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful, merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and call us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. And so today we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever proclaim the glory of your name, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and joy which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the words made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, and out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Then hold and us keep the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance of Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as the faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Just one announcement of information. Uh, late Friday afternoon, uh, I got a communique from the diocesan office. Bishop Loya will be visiting us in 2022 and his visitation date is January 30th, uh, 2022, the last Sunday in January. So uh, please mark your calendars. There'll be more information about it as it unfolds. Uh, he will be the celebrant and he will also preach. Uh, and then I'm sure meet and greet with everybody because he's not been here before. And let me tell you, you will enjoy his company. He's got a great sense of humor. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.